And welcome back, footy fans, to another episode of Donnie's Disposals. I am your host, Coach Donnie Hess, here back with another VFL Vantage. Yes, we got to talk the Victorian Football League. We have had four rounds go through both competitions with rounds five through nine in the women's and rounds four through seven in the men's. And joining me, as always, my faithful co-host, the Victorian guru that is... Mr. Brendan Rhodes. Brendan, great to see you, sir. Great to be with you, Donnie, again. But uh, I, I'm in the Victorian comp, but I ain't a Victorian. I'm just, I'm just going <laughs> to say that straight up. Well, we, we, we've, uh, dis- no, we've discussed like- that. You're a very proud New South Walesman, but you yeah. cover the Victorian Football League I, I with do, grace I and class. Yeah. So. Like, me calling you, like, like me calling you Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little that might be a little far on that one but that's 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 okay we, we we won't get on it too much so just really quickly as we said rounds five through nine in the women and round four through seven in the men's sir i have to say this a lot of great storylines just your initial thoughts of the month of play that we've had gone in both victorian leagues this year Oh, absolutely amazing uh you can sum it all up with what happened last weekend even uh which we'll get to a little bit later on, but we had, I think, some of the most amazing results all on the same day, a couple of them even on the same ground, which which you just could not have picked. And and the fact that, um, well, I usually go at around about probably 80%, 80 to 85% on my tips. This year I'm sitting at about 60 to 65. So that, that tells you how good our two competitions are at the moment. It, well, either our two competitions are very good or I've, or I've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say that I have to say this. I'll throw this out. Three no win teams all ended their win streak during this month. And I, I almost messaged you on every single one. Not only does Coburg and the the Northern Bull Ants both get wins in the men's competition, but finally the streak in the women's ends as Darabin finally get their win. So I'm bursting with excitement. We got to talk about this. Let's jump to the women's round five. We're gonna we're gonna go through a lot of lopsided results, some some interesting games that have gone on all the way back in round five. We start off Williamstown knocking off the Western Bulldogs 46-25, a 21 point win, a 50 point smashing by the Box Hill Hawks over the North Melbourne Ruse 77-27. The Giants continue to steam along as they get a massive 85 point win over the Geelong Cats 94 to nine. The Swans still staying strong with a very very impressive 85 point win over the Casey Demons. The Blues knock off the Burrows by 8, 36-18. Collingwood knock off the Darabin Falcons, 41-13, a 28-point win. And the Bombers beat the Saints, beat the Southern Saints by 9 at the hangout, 34-25. Just looking at the scores, I mean, you have to say, two of the last three games by 8 points and by 9 points were two of the better games, at least score-wise, for this round. Uh, they certainly were. The the Carlton Port Melbourne game, a little bit of a surprise, but Carlton actually brought in a couple of their absolute AFLW superstars for this game. Darcy Vessio played played their first uh, VFLW game in about three years, three or four years, and and played a massive role in in getting them over the line. The, some of the results in the VFLW have been a bit skewed by the by the number of AFLW players that the that the clubs choose to release to play and and that's what happened that day but it was it was a it was Carlton comfortably they led by three goals at three quarter time they held on port kicked three goals to one in the last quarter but were never going to catch up uh, the Essendon Southern Saints game uh, they also had a couple of stars playing Essendon the I think that was might have been the last game of the dual Lambert Pierce medalist Georgia Nan Scorn and she was Mm-hmm. She was magnificent as well. The Bombers actually kicked three goals unanswered in the first quarter, and and that was that was it. The Saints won the rest of the day, but just couldn't catch up. Um, the game that I saw was the was the Box Hill Hawks North Melbourne game, which was a, a very even and competitive game until about halfway through the second quarter. Uh, the Hawks kicked three late in the second quarter. That gave them a a 27 point lead at half time and then they just ran away with it and it was a it was a dominant performance against a fellow undefeated opposition 
Uh, definitely for sure. It, it's it's been very very interesting each each particular round, and I I've noticed that the Hawks kind of started it, and then the Spuns and Giants kind of continued. And I see other teams have started to go with it. I mean, I know later on we'll see a game where Ellie Blackburn hops in for the Western Bulldogs. So it, it's very interesting to see these AFLW players getting getting a little bit more of a crack in the v, in the VFLW. So interesting. We'll jump to round six as we see the Casey Demons bounce back from the drop by the Swans to beat the Southern Saints by a 16 41 at 25. The Cats beat the North Melbourne, beat North Melbourne by 24 59 at 35. The Essendon Bombers knock off the Pies 64 47, a 17 point win there. The Giants edge, bur- edge the Burrow, beating them by 25 43 at 20 43 18. The Western Bulldogs knock off the Carlton Blues by 18 43 at 25. The Williamstown Seagulls knock off the Falcons of Darabin by 38, 57, 19. And the Swans drub the Box Hill Hawks by 63, 82, 19. So, I mean, some close results here, but not not as close as some of the rounds before. But even still, sometimes scores can be a little deceiving. Okay, well, North Melbourne actually started favourite against Geelong in that game and, and were convincingly beaten. That was a that was probably the biggest turn up of the round. Um, Essendon brought in four or five of their AFLW stars to play Collingwood on uh, on their ANZAC round match, got the result, and then uh, and then those those players just sort of moved away again after that one game. Um, the Giants, obviously, too too good for Port Melbourne, who didn't have a lot of Richmond players. We'll uh, we'll touch on that in it. In a second, when we get to when we get to the next round, when we get to round seven, um, the Western Bulldogs. This was Ellie Blackburn's first appearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's act, uh, when she arrived, the Bulldogs were two, three, two wins, three losses, sitting I think about second or third last on the ladder. Percentage pretty ordinary. Um, since since she's arrived, Darcy Vescio played in that game again too. But uh, Ellie Blackburn is just one of the best players that. Uh, the women's football has seen and and she's won the last three games for the Bulldogs and dragged her teammates along for the ride and they've gone from what I say second last to well they're in the top four but that mm-hmm. that'll climb when uh, when GWS uh, who no longer plays uh, drop down the ladder mm-hmm. uh, amazing amazing effort there as well and Box Hill and Sydney Box Hill went into that game undefeated they had eight I think eight. AFLW players, most of them youngsters. Mm-hmm. The Swans fielded 21, a full AFLW listed team. They weren't full strength, but that was the biggest the biggest margin. I, I thought Box Hill was going to be a lot more competitive than that, um, but it just showed that, uh, yeah, the difference in standard between AFLW and VFLW. Yeah, definitely for sure. And it, it was one of the, it was one of those. I sat down because I had to watch this game because I I thought Box Hill was really going to give it, and it just Sydney kind of they took the lead really quickly and just never really hung up on it. So I kind of want to jump to the next round because I, I was taking a look at some of the results as as you were talking about that, and this has got to be one of the insane rounds of footy from this last month we'll start off as Darabin just falls short to Port Melbourne by a 23-15 we're starting to see we're starting to see Darabin start to play a little bit better the shock of all shocks as the final game for the Swans they fall to Collingwood at in Sydney by two 37 35 we'll talk about this later you know Collingwood kind of wanted to be sure that they put in a good performance as several AFLW superstars actually dressed for this game i remember i remember seeing the 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 list and going collingwood's going for it carlton beat the cats by three 33 30 north melbourne just edge out the southern saints by one 24 23 a draw we get a draw as well 41 41 between casey and williamstown and then we kind of get the drubbings to end the round as GWS beat Essendon by 47, 55 to 8. And as you said, Ellie Blackburn led Western Bulldogs, smash the Box Hill Hawks by 25, 55, 30. But oh my gosh, draw, one point win, three point win, two point win, eight point win. This was an insane round of footy and some great action in, on the women's side. We could we could talk about this one for the rest of the podcast, mate. <laughs> um, unbelievable stuff. We'll start up in Sydney, 
where, as I said, like, and, I, and I've been saying it right throughout the Giants and the Swans stint in the VFLW, they, they were coming to give their AFLW listed players a hit out pre-season, start of their pre-season, um, three months or whatever it is still before the start of the AFLW competition. Um, nine of the 10 teams that played the Swans or the Giants rested the majority of their AFLW players, their AFLW big game names, and they uh, they duly got flogged. It was as simple as that. They got thrashed, mm-hmm. as, as you would expect. Now, Collingwood saw this as an opportunity to potential to give themselves a chance to either to at least save percentage uh, at worst save percentage and and at best get four points that no one else will ever get mm-hmm. and the players that they came out with in this game uh some some of them hadn't played vflw for six years mm-hmm. would you would you believe like um uh sabrina frederick mm-hmm. came in hadn't played since i think 2019 and, and she beat she beat um, Ali Morford, who's the All Australian ruck from from last year. She's a she's a star of the of the AFLW competition. Um, they brought in uh, Lauren Brazali, Ruby Schleicher mm-hmm. played a played a rare game, first one since 2019, uh, and they and they were still ten points behind with 90 seconds to go in the game. Would you believe mm-hmm. it was 35 to 25? The um, the Colling- Collingwood got a 50 metre penalty that took them. It took Sarah Sansonetti, I think it was, to within about um, 25 metres of goal. She put it through. They had about 38 seconds left when the when the ball was thrown up in the middle of the ground. The Swans for- failed to protect the back of the contest. Frederick tapped it down to Muran Atkinson, the Irish recruit. She kicked it down to full forward. The ball spilled out the back of the pack. Caitlin Day kicked a goal. Siren goes before the ball gets back to the centre. Collingwood scored the most unbelievable win and four points that could and probably will be the difference between whether they make the finals or not. Mm-hmm. It's just absolutely insane. I remember I was watching I was watching this game up until I think the men's swans game, and I was gonna catch the I was gonna catch the highlights later. And when I saw the highlights later, I just went what the heck happened because i literally they went into three-quarter time they went into three-quarter time with a nice little lead and i'm thinking they got this they'll be fine but you could kind of tell collingwood was always in this they were never really completely out of it the third quarter you kind of got a little eerie because they they had that big lead going to going into three-quarter time but the pies just stayed there you you gotta you gotta tip your cap to the pies on this one and, and it's and it's I think it's smart by the by the calling by the Collingwood the AFL and VFLW brass to, to to put some of them in because you just got four points that could be like gold come the rest of the yeah. season come finals time so one hundred percent with those, you. And those yeah. biggest names then uh, then those biggest names stepped aside again for mm-hmm. the following week which will which uh, we'll touch on in a moment when they when they played Geelong. But the rest of the team had got the confidence and the knowledge of how to play at that at the level from those from that one appearance, and away they went, and away they could continue completely go with a with their new look team. Yeah. Um, Casey and Casey and Williamstown, the draw. There was nothing between it all day. Um, two points at quarter time, nine points at half time, seven points at three quarter time, and then Casey came home. So uh, an amazing result there. Um, Bulldogs beating Box Hill. I think that was the first time in about four years. And as I said, Ellie Blackburn was was magnificent in that one. Mm-hmm. North Melbourne just held on against the Saints. Uh, Port Melbourne and Darabin, that was a good game. I commentated that one. Um, Darabin did get a goal in the last minute to make it a little bit closer than it otherwise was. But they, they were competitive. They were very competitive. They just couldn't find a way to score. But uh, getting closer was was exactly what you said, and that was true. Mm -hmm. definitely for sure we move to round eight i'm going to do this i may not do this 100 order and the the reason that i say this because there's a reason okay so anybody that's following along we'll start on western bulldogs knock off the borough by 33 48 15 williamstown survive a scare by north melbourne 32 28 a four-point win by the seagulls there 
we'll jump the next game because we're going to talk about it last. And that is when we go to Windy Hill as the Essendon Bombers beat the KC Demons 67 at 26. As you said, Collingwood's confidence has they roll right over the Geelong Cats by 42, 43 to one. Yes, I said that correctly. 43 to one. Box Hill bounces back after a couple of tough performances to knock off the Southern Saints 29-18. And the game I skipped is because, as I said before, a losing streak ends as the Darabin Falcons knock off the Carlton Blues 48-23, a 25-point win. Thankfully, this losing streak is over. It may not be the closest game in the world, but darn it, I'm happy for the Falcons. They finally get a win. And as they and as they sing in their song, they're fan falcantastic, and that's exactly how they would have been feeling after that. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Twenty-eight defeats in a row. Uh, they, the losing streak started in round eight, 2022, so two years, and with a few days because of the change of the change of the uh, starting time of the season. I think it worked out 770 days from the former superpower of the competition to get a win and and how sweet to beat the next door neighbors as well uh in Carlton to be to be able to do that it was it was just absolutely sensational to see and and uh, anyone who wasn't a Carlton supporter was uh, was absolutely cheering for Darabin and for women's football so so a huge congratulations uh to them and yeah on onwards and upwards from here they've they've got a very very tough game this weekend as mm-hmm. they try to <laughs> as they try to back it up, but uh, but I, I certainly think that now that they've remembered how to win and they know that they can win, there's probably going to be more on the horizon. Um, the rest of the round, well, I, I did the Box Hill Hawks Southern Saints game, and that was a thriller for most of the game. There was absolutely nothing in it. Uh, the Hawks kicked a goal with about 30 seconds to go that put them 11 points in front. Um, Geelong, well, that was their 100th game in the VFLW competition. They're only the second team to reach 100 VFLW games, and one point is their lowest ever score. So they were, they'd be, they'd be devastated by that, especially as they went into that game with a with a reasonable team and probably would have started favourites against Collingwood, who'd made seven or eight changes off their AFLW players from the team that beat Sydney, uh, and then. Williamstown had never previously beaten North Melbourne and Bulldogs had never previously beaten Port Melbourne. So all this happened on the same weekend. Unbelievable. Absolutely insane. But in it just I'm, I'm happy for Darabin. And again, it's it's just you never like seeing a team go that long without a win. And I and I know that it's one of those where you're facing you're facing teams that have AFL sides and and so the competition is just completely different so I mean I remember seeing tons and tons of of social media posts of the rooms as they're singing the song the elation is the final siren so I had to I had to chuckle at that one as as much as I was happy for Coburg and Preston in the men's I was extremely happy for the Darabin Falcons to get that win that was absolutely magnificent sensational like I said Unfortunately, you're completely right. They they were not they're not greeted after their first win with a with a great opponent, in my opinion, unfortunately. But it's still happy they got off. They got the win under their belt. Let's see if that progresses forward. So we jump from the women's to the men's. We go through rounds four through eight really quickly here. We start off down in Frankston as the Frankston Dolphins beat the Northern Bull Lance by 51, 85, 34. A cracking game at the hangar as the South Park Sharks come down to Victoria and steal four points with a one point win over the Bombers. The, the GWS Giants come down to Avalon and knock off Werribee 106 98 an 8-point win by the Giants there. The Cats survive a scare by against the Brisbane Lions and get a 3-point win in Ipswich on the road 67-64. Box Hill continues a strong, a, a, with a strong game, beating North Melbourne 131-71, a 60-point win there. The Footscray Bulldogs knock off the Williamstown Seagulls 84-41, a 43 three point win there a draw is seen to end the between the suns and the swans 
the Coburg Lions get their first win of the season. And I'm look. I think I'm looking. I am looking at the right say. I was like, like I'm sitting here going, wait, I didn't think it was that far back. It was Coburg get their first win by 15, 87, 72, beating the Collingwood Magpies and the Carlton Blues beat the Borough by 20, 111, 91. I mean, it's easy to go. We have to say it. Tip hat tip to Coburg. They finally get their win, but some amazing results, just like the women's a few rounds ago, a draw, a three point win, an eight point win, a one point win, a great round of footy here back all the way back in round four. Yeah. Well, we just gave all the kudos to, uh, to the Darab and Falcons. We give the same to Coburg 26 losses in a row. I think this was for the Lions remembering back, uh, they hadn't won since August 2022, so it was around about 660 days, so about two or three months less than the than the Falcons had to wait. But a sensational performance to uh, to knock off Collingwood, and they and they did it at, in in style. Really, they led at quarter time, they led at half time. They got themselves a little bit of a break in the third quarter, up by three goals, and and at the start of the last term. Um, just with the belief that, hey, this is finally going to be our day. They just went bang. They kicked three quick goals at the start of the last quarter, blew the game wide open. They got themselves, I think, 35 points in front, something somewhere along those lines. And then, yeah, Collingwood came back with the last last four goals of the game, I think it was, to, uh, to tighten the final margin. But it was a convincing victory for the Lions. And and a, a massive relief and massive celebration for them. So anyone following the Lions, um, yeah, I, I saw the I saw them belt the song out for that one too. And um, and I'd reckon the the words are still bouncing off the walls a month later. Yeah, it's it's fan it's fantastic to see again, and I absolutely love it. It's great to see that because they come close so many times and clean that one Geelong game last year where they just couldn't seem to kick straight to get it over the line. So fantastic for the Lions here, hoping that it breeds a few more before the season ends. So let's jump over to round five as Richmond knock off the Casey Demons by twenty ninety five seventy five. The Seagulls of Williamstown beat the Werribee Tigers by 52-101-49. The Giants beat the North Melbourne Roos by 27-94-67. Frankston continue a very strong start to their season, knocking off Coburg 76-59 by 17. The Port Melbourne just fall short to the Gold Coast Suns by 5, 90-85. Geelong with an absolute smashing of the Carlton Blues by 101, 156-55. The Brisbane Lions defeat their fellow Queensland Queenslanders, beating the Southport Sharks by 9, 95-86. Sandringham beat the Northern Bullants by 57, 87-30. Essendon knock off the pies by 12, 97, 85. And the Box Hill Hawks give a nice little thumping to the Sydney Swans by 27, by 27, 102, 75. Again, some cracking games here. I mean, Brisbane Lion going on the road and getting a win at Southport by nine. Gold Coast finding a way to get a win down here, down in Melbourne at ETU Stadium by five over Port, over Port Melbourne. Some fantastic wins here. And where would be a little bit underwhelming after last year's fantastic season? Yeah, key talking points, the Suns and Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne were still looking for their first victory of the season at this stage, and they led by 15 points entering time on of the last quarter and looked like they were going to finally get it done. Um, then Gold Coast kicked a couple of points and then three goals beyond the 24-minute mark of the last quarter, uh, and Alex Davies pinched the victory with a snap out of the pack at the 31-minute mark of the last quarter to to break Port Melbourne hearts and, and get another win for the reigning premiers after they after they made a similar escape with a, with that draw against the Swans the week before in uh, in what I must say was the ugliest draw I've ever seen. This <laughs> that was a terrible game of football, and uh, it was good that both teams got two points because neither of them deserved four in that game. Um, <laughs> In the, in the other ones, like Brisbane Lions, a great win over Southport. Probably could, probably could have won a little bit easier. Essendon and Collingwood was a terrific game of football, apart from uh, apart from the fact that neither team could kick straight. 13-19 um, to 11-19, that was. 
Uh, and the Box Hill Sydney game is the other notable one there. Uh, really, Sydney led that game by 25 points in the second quarter. And, it, and um, Box Hill got a couple back. And at the 13-minute mark of the third quarter, the Swans were in front by 10. Unfortunately, Box Hill's Hawthorne player, Sam Butler, went down with a badly broken leg mm-hmm. uh, in the game. Uh, play was play was halted for 36 minutes before an ambulance could come and, and treat him and get him off the ground and and straight after that, the, the Hawks were inspired for their mate and they, and they ran all over top of the Swans after that. I think they kicked the first six goals after the delay. So fantastic character-building performance by Box Hill in that one. Yeah, one of the one of those unfortunately is the is that the momentum for one team goes and the other team gets a li- gets a lift trying to be with the inspiration and it happens unfortunately. So we'll move on to round six as Southport beat the Collingwood Magpies by 27, 101, 74. Richmond beat the Coburg Lions by 32, 93, 61. Werribee get on track as they finally get a win as they get a win over Carlton 94 62. Port Melbourne knock off the Northern Bull Ants by 34, 98, 64. Sydney Swans in the Sydney Derby light, as I start, as I've called some of these rivalries in the state leagues, get a 10 point win over the GWS Giants, 85, 75. The Bulldogs get a nice little win over Box Hill by 13, 73, 60. The Gold Coast Suns smash their queens their q clash rivals in the q clash light by 86 157 71 geelong get a nice little win bouncing back getting a 113 49 win over the frankston football club sandringham survive a scare by north melbourne by 3 99 at 96 and the Williamstown Seagulls get a win over Casey by 32, 168. I mean, a cracking game between Sandringham and North Melbourne and some absolute smashings. I mean, not normally do you see Gold Coast and Brisbane play in an absolute drubbing. I mean, 86 points. That is not what I would have expected. Not at all. I picked Brisbane Lions to win that game. Uh, so that, that tells you that tells you um, <laughs> how you, how you can pick them. The, the, um, the Suns, the Suns' form has revolved a lot around the availability again at the AFL level. Mm-hmm. Um, if they've got players in, um, yeah, if they if they've got players in, um, then obviously they perform like that. But then if they've got players out, as they did the following week, like last weekend, which you'll which you'll look at uh, shortly, you will um, you'll see that you'll see that they struggle. So there's not a lot of depth there. They are, they're absolutely fantastic. And yes, they, um, uh, they, they're still going to be there and abouts if they can keep their best team on the park, the Suns. Uh, I wasn't, I was calling the Casey Williamstown game on this Sunday afternoon. Uh, so I missed Sandringham and North Melbourne, which many people have described as one of the games of the season. The, uh, the Zebras led that game pretty much all day after kicking seven goals in the first quarter and North Melbourne in the, in the last quarter, it just went, it went nuts. North Melbourne came from 22 points down at three quarter time to hit the lead. Um, Sandringham went again with the next three goals. They got their three goal lead back. And then the Kangaroos came again with two goals uh, after the, after the 28 minute mark up 20, they kicked two goals, two after the 28 minute mark of the last quarter. And they only needed one of those last two shots at goal to be a major and they would have pinched the game. So absolutely stunning result that was for Sandringham and a, and a real boost for them. Uh, Williamstown and Casey, Casey was actually in front at three quarter time, but uh, they, they'd lost two players to injury and three more had been pulled out by Melbourne before the game. So they just didn't have the manpower to keep going. And, and Willie kicked eight goals in the last quarter to run over the top of them. So um, they, were the, they were the main results, I think, in that round on the Sunday afternoon. Definitely. And, yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be worried too much about Werribee. They've had a lot of injuries. And once they get them back, look out. Yeah, they could be scary if they get everybody back healthy. And we jump to round seven, the last round that has happened before this week. Friday night, we, we saw the Casey Demons survive a scare by the Carlton Blues by 369 66. 
the Port Melbourne knockoff Coburg, knockoff Coburg by 32, 94, 62. Frankston get a win over the GWS Giants by 14, 61, 47. A fun one for UNI Swan supporters as Sydney edge out North Melbourne with an absolute belting kick by Luke Parker playing in the VFL, which we can discuss at another time. We will skip the next game because I want to talk about that last, just because it's a result that we've been talking about a few times. Williamstown beat the Essendon Bombers by 11, 90, 79. Southport beat the Gold Coast Suns, 105, 58. Footscray knock off the Richmond Tigers, 116, 85. And Box Hill beat Sandringham, 87, 82. And the last one I come up is the Northern Bull Ants, as we said. And their losing streak, knocking off, just like Coburg, the Collingwood Magpies, 55, 48, a seven-point win by the Bullies. I mean, a, a fantastic round. Like I said, the huge, the huge awesome news for the Bullies, the win with Parker kicking a 60-meter 60 60-meter 60 torp to end that, and you get a fantastic finish between Box Hill and Sandringham with a five-point win there. Another amazing round of VFL football. Amazing is your word. My word is wow. <laughs> we could talk. We could talk for an hour about just this round, just this round alone. Mm -hmm. um, the Collingwood. I had a Collingwood supporter say to me after last weekend that the Magpies are the most generous club in the competition. <laughs> they're, they're, they're the team that just keep on giving. Uh, Coburg three weeks ago, Northern Bull Ants now. What a performance this was by the Ants. They, they've been, they've shown that they can defend. Their, their defence has been pretty good under new coach Rowan Welsh. Their attack has been the issue. And at three-quarter time in this game, they had two goals, seven on the board, 19. And they trailed by 23 points to Collingwood. The Magpies kicked the first goal of the last quarter. So they put them 28 points in front uh, at the... Having a quick look at that, that was at the uh, six-minute mark of the last quarter. Collingwood led by 28 points, and they did not score again, the Magpies. Absolutely magnificent. Behind goal, 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 behind goal. Then John luc Velasaris, the superstar of the Bull Ants, snaps an amazing goal out of the pack at the 20-minute mark to, to put them in front. And, um, and I think the commentator... Uh, Joey said they've gone bloody nuts here, <laughs> which is <laughs> very Australian. Uh, very and much then, so. Well, the Bull Ants, the Bull Ants had three more chances to seal it. They kicked three points, but Collingwood was never was never coming back. And this one was sixteen lose losses in a row, and three hundred and sixty three days. So they broke the drought on exactly the same weekend as they won the Battle of Bell Street against Coburg last year. So. Absolutely amazing, sensational to see, and uh, yeah, really happy for. Uh, and this is from the song as well. Uh, all the good stickers in the red and white. I don't know what it means, but, but they, <laughs> they they sing it and they and, uh, and they sung it loud and proud last uh, last Saturday at uh, at Preston City Oval. Um, I did the Casey and Carlton game. Wet conditions, pouring rain for for most of the game. It was difficult. Uh, a young player from Carlton, Jackson Binns, had 43 disposals. The next best player on the ground had 24. He, he was that far best on it wasn't funny in a losing team. And Ben Brown for the Casey Demons. And, of course, Melbourne, he's forced his way back into Melbourne's team this weekend by taking eight marks and having eight set shots at goal. He kicked two six, so he... He should have done a lot better, but um, but he, he showed that if he can sort his kicking out, then his game is back, which is great for all Melbourne supporters. Um, the Bar are no problem with Coburg for their second win of the year. Frankston's win against GWS in Sydney is the first time that they have won interstate since the Neefel clubs came into the competition three years ago. They were zero and five, and their first interstate win since they beat Tasmania in 2008. So fantastic result there for the Dolphins and one they can really build on. You mentioned Luke Parker. Well, I, I went to this game. I wasn't commentating, but I went to this game and it was an absolute cracker. Goal for goal all day. North got three goals up. Sydney got three goals up. Uh, North were a point in front at about the 27-minute mark of the last quarter and Parker had the ball. 
Um, he's loaded up with the torpedo punt or the barrel, as we as we like to call it, seventy meters. He's kicked it and it landed. It cleared the pack, landed on the goal line, and went through for the most remarkable goal. I don't think I've ever seen him kick it more than about fifty, and he's kicked it seventy to to win this game. And and uh, and as you said, it's a story for another day. But he still hasn't been able to find his way back into the AFL team, which is which says how well the the Swans are going in the AFL. Um, Williamstown Essendon. Essendon was. Uh, 21 points up at three-quarter time, and Williamstown kicked six goals to one in the last quarter to run over top of them, as they did against Casey the week before. Um, you mentioned the Suns' uh, massive win over Brisbane Lions last week. They took a few extra players to Darwin for the AFL this week, and uh, and they dropped off and got flogged by the Sharks. Um Richmond spare a thought for their captain and their best player, Lockie Street, who joined the long injury list with a with a he needs a knee reconstruction now. Unfortunately, I think they've got about twenty five or six players across both lists with long term injuries now. Richmond, so how they've remained competitive in the VFL is is beyond me. And the Box Hill Sandringham game, I drove two hours down the road to Wonthaggy for this one. Absolutely remarkable stuff. Box Hill looked like they were going to win by 100. They were 43 up midway through the second quarter. Um, zebras looked nowhere near it, but they pe- they gradually just pegged away and pegged away, and they hit the lead. Uh, Sandringham, they actually hit the lead with, uh, what was it, at the 20... At the 19-minute mark of the last quarter, they hit the lead, and they're going to win the 20... Sorry, the 26-minute mark of the last quarter, they hit the lead. And they were going to win this game. And then, would you believe, a mark is taken by a Hawks stalwart by the name of Stuart Horner between the centre circle and the back of the centre square. He's held on to a fraction too long. He gets a 50-metre penalty. Man on the mark is 45 metres out. Stuart Horner is kicking from 49, directly in front, mind you. But... This is his 50th game of VFL football, and he has never even so much as scored a single behind in his career. He kicks that goal, kicks that goal, puts the Hawks five points in front, and the siren sounds three seconds after the restart. (laughs) As I said, in 25 years of commentating football, this game always has a way of telling you that you have just never seen it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as soon as you think you figured it, as soon as you think you figured out everything that could possibly happen, something crazy happens. I mean, I, I, I probably I have a fraction of the years of you watching in footy, and I've even seen some of the crazy things. I mean, you and I as Swans fans, I mean, Dane Rampy climbing the post against Essendon. I, I mean, <laughs> literally, I was six maybe three or four years into fully watching footy and that happened and just the the utter shock of people so i'm 100 i i the one of the things footy will always find a way to make you go huh i've never seen that before so i gotta give you yeah it's fantastic i i I just i i'm loving i'm I'm loving it here so so we'll, we'll we'll jump to our burning questions i know you are short on time so we will try to go as quickly as we can while still doing as best we can on this we'll jump to the women's burning questions first after eight rounds we see box hill sitting on top of the table is there a team that can catch this hawks side or is this minor premiership the hawks to win the minor premiership is the Hawks to win, yes. Uh, that, that's clear. They're a game and a hefty percentage in front of of, uh, of Williamstown, who are third on the ladder to GWS, but nominally second because the Giants are finished now. The Western Bulldogs are also only a game behind, but they're over 100% behind mm-hmm. um, because of the floggings they got earlier in the year. Essendon's definitely one to watch. Port's one to watch. Like I think the question you you might have asked is how close this competition is going to be, which I'll let, which I'll answer when you do, when you do ask it. But uh, yeah, Box Hill is the best team at the moment. Um, but the results are all skewed by the AFLW. So we want to know how long the top AFLW players stick around mm-hmm. before the VFLW players take over and, uh, and who gets whatever good position. But uh, the longer they play, the harder it's going to be for the Hawks to get caught. 
Yeah, definitely for sure. Like I, the one thing I got to give is I, I downloaded the VFL the VFL app, and it actually it does actually have um, the the ladder without G with, without GWS in Sydney at one That's, time, yeah. and then now they put them back in, which really really irritates me because oh, as you, as you said, it's Box Hill, Williamstown, the Western Bulldogs, Essendon, Port Melbourne, and Collingwood would be the eight so far, and then, and as it's kind of the great transition to my second question is with six rounds left in the season, there are still 10 teams, 10 teams who I'm looking at mathematically, who I think can make finals and you, who I think can still make finals. I think the Southern saints, I hate to say it. I think we could probably put a line through them when it comes to making finals. Is this the most competitive season you've ever seen? Because I mean, Yes, we've we had the skewing of GW of GWS in Sydney, but even still, like when you take those out, I mean the top six, the top six, there's only a two game gap between first and sixth. Well, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say last year because remember last year we went into the last round of the season with uh, with nine teams actually able to make the finals, and and it finished up with. Um, I think North Melbourne finished in ninth spot and they were only two wins away from top. Mm-hmm. So that, that's how amazing that was. Yeah, the, the, this year, the results, as I said, they've been skewed by AFLW. They've been skewed by the Swans and the Giants. So uh, I'm I'm not particularly prepared to write the Saints off just yet. They, they've got a good enough team to make a run at it. They want to do it very soon because they've lost six games in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think... The percentages, the percentages are very, very poor for a lot of teams because of the hidings they got off Sydney and GWS. Yeah. Um, I think you've got the top, the, the top eight as it stands, so down to Collingwood, um, they're probably the better teams. I think, I think, I think the premiers coming from Bo- from Box Hill, Williamstown, Western Bulldogs, or Port Melbourne, but uh, none of the others. You know, you can fully rule out of making the six at this stage. Yeah, the the draw right now makes makes it really interesting too because Casey Casey Demon sit not sit sit seventh right now, but with a percentage of fifty six point four, with Carlton breathing down their next two point behind with a percentage of eighty three point one. So it just it it really does show you that the hidings that a couple of these teams took early with with either with the GWS or Sydney that it it is affecting them it'll it'll balance out you still have six you still have six games left but I mean it's interesting to look at this interesting to look at this ladder just because of the fact that once you like I said once you remove GWS and Sydney which I think eventually the math will work its way to where they probably won't make finals is it yeah I think it's it's going to tighten up. I think the percentages are going to balance out. Uh, the percentages are going to balance out a little bit. It's going to be a cracking finals. I, I I agree with you. I think there's four teams that I think could probably be genuine flag contenders going to uh, the finals. So we'll jump over to the men's really quickly, and and kind of like with the women's, we'll go to the top la- la- ladder leaders as we talk about Footscray which is a little interesting. They sit atop the ladder after the first seven rounds of the season. Is this a little bit of a surprise to you? Because for me, the, the talk of the AFL is how Luke Beveridge and the, and the doggies men and the, and, and the, and the AFL doggies are very inconsistent. They're very Jekyll and Hyde, but it seems like Footscray is not having any problems. But when you also have some of the superstars like Caleb Daniels and Jack McCray and Riley Sanders coming down and playing, that's, that's some pretty good talent playing in their VFL squad. That, that's the key. Luke, Luke Beveridge is the is the expert. He's he's the one. I'm, I, you can't really question him uh, because he's the one doing the job. But uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of AFL players who are far too good for the VFL running around in that Footscray team uh, on a week to week basis, and and that's why they're winning and going and going so well. Uh, but there are quite a few very good teams breathing down their necks, waiting for them to slip up. Yeah, definitely for sure. And then a last one, a last one. I thought well, let's do a little bit of a fun topic with Coburg and the Northern Bull Ants both getting their first wins. Is this a good thing for the comp now that every single team has at least one win? Oh, absolutely sensational! You could not ask for better. Um, they're both they're both beaten Collingwood too, which anyone who isn't a Collingwood supporter will be happy <laughs> about. Um, <laughs> Made me chuckle a little bit when I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sorry, Josh Fraser. He's a top bloke, the Collingwood coach. But uh, 
Um, so I apologise to him for that. He'd be that frustrated. It's not funny. Although happy for the Bull Ants, who he played a massive role in uh, in rescuing when uh, when Carlton pulled the alignment a couple of years ago. Uh, there's there's, poten- there's potentially more wins on the horizon for them too. They play each other in a couple of weeks, so one of them's going to get a second victory. Unless they're, they're they're draw. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I hate, go, I hate going there, but that's the one thing I love that everybody's like, well, somebody's going to win. I'm like, well, draw technically is still available, yeah. so they don't have to win. But Exactly, exactly. And I would go for extra time too, just, just between you and me. And go, <laughs> Get the four um, points to yeah. somebody. Yeah, just, 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 to, just to split them up. But uh, yeah, I love yeah it. there's some teams down the bottom there that you, that you can probably stick a line through now. Um, it's hard to see Essendon. And Carlton, of course, Coburg and the Bull Ants, we don't expect them to be competing for the finals. But Essendon and Carlton are down there with one win each. Um, Port Melbourne, Casey and Collingwood on two wins. They're going to find it tough to to catch up. Uh, And from Brisbane Lions, who were my tip to make the grand final, sitting in 14th spot, that tells you how even our competition Mm. is right now. Frankston, the big big, uh, mover, sitting in eighth spot on four and two, which is great to see. Uh, as well, but uh, yeah, there are there are Premiership contenders everywhere in the VFL, which is which is much more than we could say last year. Definitely for sure. Now, normally we do tipping, but I'm looking at my time. I'm looking at my time, and I know that we had discussed this before. We're short on time, so what I'm just going to do really, really quickly is. Thank you for this. Thank you for hopping on again, Brendan. This is fantastic. I'm going to skip tipping this week only because you've got a train to catch and you've got some things to go on. So I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you again so much for hopping on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to quickly end this episode. This is going to be another episode of Donnie's Disposals. Again, keep track of it. More footy coverage still to come. Keep an eye on it. We cover a little bit of everything. We love having you on. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. We will see you again very, very soon with more footy coverage back in your ear.